just as sunflowers chase the sun. Inductees into the South Dakota Hall of Fame chase their dreams day after day, year after year. The 700 plus inductees in the Hall of Fame come from all backgrounds and corners of our state. What their stories have in common is their unwavering courage and belief in their dreams. These dream chasers are an inspiration for us all to strive for excellence and believe in our own potential to chase dreams well into the future. Dr. John Barlow's achievements include scientist, scholar, and teacher. He displays humility in his career achievements and has positively impacted medicine across the state. In 1965, he joined the Laboratory of Clinical Medicine at SDSU. His influence helped create a regional reference laboratory, the nucleus of the Sioux Valley Hospital Pathology Department, and provided oversight for both the two-year and four-year medical schools, developing Sioux Valley Hospitals into a regional clinical leader. In 1985, while practicing pathology, he became chairman of the board for the institution in Rapid City, leading it into the integrated medical system for Western South Dakota. And I was very fortunate when I came to South Dakota that I had a lot of opportunities uh, in education. For instance, uh, at John Sauter Home and the administration at Sioux Valley Hospital allowed us to form a pathology residency program. And of course, that is always the future. And there's many of them practicing in this state right now still, uh, and they're really good people. Uh, and I was able to, through Carl Wagner and other people, teach at a medical school. So these are really great opportunities. And mm -hmm. But for John and his partners to have a first class pathology residency in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, that's very abnormal. Hmm. for a very small hospital. Yeah. And they took the time and the energy, instead of going home early, instead of not coming in on a Saturday, instead of being there on a Sunday, to read the slides with the residents and help them through. That is more than doing a job. That's loving what you do. And because they did that, there was a pathology residency. There is a pathology residency. And it's a first class residency. Mm -hmm. And their fellows have gone many places in this country to go to work. And it's because John and his partners took the extra time and effort to do that. They didn't have to. Mm -hmm. You want to have a good office or you want to have a good hospital, patients got to come first. Mm -hmm. And then things fall in place. And when you look at what medicine is, sometimes it can be very chaotic and people don't seem like they're sitting there waiting in an office for a long period of time when the surgeon doesn't show up. But he may be in all kinds of trouble someplace else. Mm -hmm. Some of it is just communication, mm -hmm. but people end up knowing when they're important and when they're not, and it's got to it filters through the team. Uh, I, I'm sure that in my office, some of the patients came to see my nurse rather than me. They were happy. <laughs> they, were, they were happy to see her. But I mean, that the, the gal that picks up the telephone. Yeah and makes a first hello is the one that determines how you're going to feel about an office or a hospital or a pathology lab. And so all of these things are all intertwined and that's what's so complicated about medicine, but that's what's so satisfactory about it. I, in the last few months, I've had to switch things to being a patient instead of being a doctor. Yeah. And I got very good care, incidentally. But it made me realize how hard people work to do and that includes the nurses that includes the physicians i mean uh my internist physician he would come in and I, i'm seeing him eight o'clock in the morning i think this guy is going to have to go to a busy office and see a whole bunch of patients with a whole bunch of challenging problems then he's going to have to come back and see me 
uh, along with other patients he has. And I'm not the only problem patient. There are a lot of challenging things he has to do. And I thought, that's amazing. They're really mm. busy people. And this particular physician uh, is involved in uh, trying to help the administration by being on medical staff committees. And I thought, wow, those guys work hard. And the nurses work hard, too. And that's what you also did. You, if you, you said you switched being, the, you know, you're oh, in a patient, a patient. I was receiving it. You were receiving, yeah. but you, so, you, you certainly understood on the other. Oh yeah, but yeah. I thought they had to put in a lot of effort to do things right, and they do. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want South Dakota to remember from your story and journeys? Well, I have a granddaughter who wants to be a physician. Yeah, and the question is, yeah. I, I thought it wise not to tell her what it's what I did and what it was like practicing because by the time she gets to uh, going into practice or south, she'll be doing a totally different thing and the whole atmosphere will be changed because that's the way medicine has. But I said, basically, it's the same thing. It's a service to patients and what you do. How is what area it's in or how it's actually done is always going to change. Mm -hmm. In fact, it'll change a number of times during her practice like it has for all of us. Mm -hmm. yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. And we took health care from where we found it when we started and brought it to a different level. And hopefully... There will be young people like John's granddaughter who will stand on our shoulders and use what we've put together uh, to get to a different level. Uh, and as Milt says, the technology will be different. Um, we'll do a better job of taking care of things that we didn't understand, but we'll still be dealing with people one-on-one. -on -one. I would ask you the question of, at this stage of life, um, how do you see it? How do you see this part of life? Well, I have two sons in medicine, and um, I think they're, 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 they're standing on the shoulders, and let's hope that the things that we started have got good shoulders for them to stand on. I mean, uh, I'm sure it's not an unusual story. But when we got married, I was still in medical school, and I had no ability to support her or do anything else. She was also having a few babies, by the way. And, uh, but she did that for six years because at that time, residents didn't get paid. Now they get paid a little more, and it's a little oh. more easy. But it was a long time. <coughs> wow. And I... I know it still goes on because there are a lot of men who work for the for their wives who are physicians yeah. and and do a good job and uh, stay at home yeah. and take care of things. So I, life has changed. That's all totally new. Yeah, but it's it's just what has to go on. I think it's really important to uh, support your spouse, if he decides or she decides, uh, golly, I've got to go take this extra course. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you did that, John? <laughs> <laughs> he never stopped going to school. That's yeah, right. that's right. Yeah, yeah perhaps that's, that's a very good point. As a physician you never, and an administrator, you never stop going to school. I love being the wife of a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I really yeah. have. Yeah. Do you think that's different today? I Well, since I was a medical technologist, right. I was kind of involved in it right. for a short period of time. Right. And and I don't think anybody, until they get into as a the patient, chaos. realizes how many chaotic aspects of medicine are covered and how many people are in and out of your room. 